first thing let's watch a two to try video two to try has got a new video out big up two ladies to try the video is titled um your mum's house is in is in trouble this could be relating to um the recent news about um what's his face dr drew leaving your mum's house so that's been the big news dr drew has left your mum's house and i think i saw on the your mum's house subreddit dr drew liked to post he liked to comment somebody said something like oh your mum's house is going down in flames or something and dr drew liked it so maybe there is some trouble in paradise and obviously um red bar did a great stream where he sort of broke down that horrible fucking tv show thing that they tried to do behind a paywall that was absolutely terrible so clearly they're going through a bit of a bad time and obviously the fans aren't really liking the show anymore it's not as funny um tom has definitely got under people's skin a lot more so maybe that is part of it but let's see what the video and what he's saying and then we can go and comment along the way all right so things are still not looking too good for tom segura in your mom's house studio oh, so cool. you know they ended last one second let me let me lower the because I, I put the filter up really high on the previous video because the sound was too low sorry about the sound if it popped off too low let me um actually lower it a little bit all right so things are still not looking too good for tom segura in your mom's house studios you know they ended last year on a bad note with tom's airport meltdown and nadav their producer leaving the show and it looks like these problems have carried over into the new year because dr drew just announced that he's leaving the company and carried over and by the way um fair play to nadav his channel side are very shaky remember when i reacted to it i didn't really like anything that i saw and i was kind of you know questioning the logic behind leaving a stable job like your mom's house thing to do your own thing it seemed weird especially if you could do the same thing if you could do both at the same time but he's been proved correct his Patreon is popping off. He makes tons of money on Patreon. He gets high a lot of. He gets a lot of views on his fucking own fucking channel on YouTube. So he's doing. He's doing pretty well for himself, to be fair. He's carved out a nice little lane for himself where he kind of, you know, does similar things that to what I do and other people that comment on comedy. But he does more of a like I used to be a producer. Here's my insight on podcasting. So he's actually worked out well for him. Big up and Nadav. That she had worked out well for him to the new year because dr drew just announced that he's leaving the company and then on the way out he liked a tweet that said the ship is going down lmfao yeah that's the one see look at that he liked that tweet so that's not the best sign there i mean maybe he just didn't know what this tweet was yeah or maybe he could be one of those guys that just likes anything with his name in it right you might be one of those type of dudes so. referring to or something but it's just not looking too good here you know first nadav leaving and now him and people seem to think this might have been a ripple effect from Nadav leaving. And he was a bigger part of YMH than people realized, including Tom. But I think he's starting to realize it. Like on his show recently, he was talking about him. Are those fake laughs that they do or do no. they find that funny? No, no, they, that was real. These oh. guys don't, they don't fake laugh. Okay. No, they don't All fake right. laugh. It's, it's, you'll get, you'll, you'll hear a lot of silence. Really? So that's, that's, that's how you can tell. They laugh. The last time I was here, they, when I was on your mom, they laughed a lot. Well, that was capital J, but he left. Did he die too? He looks like he's going to die, but okay. he's just, he moved on. Well, all uh, right. He has a very powerful, mighty laugh, and he was like a, 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 you know, a big laugher. Okay. But he left, and you can feel the hole. Yeah. All right. So I think Tom is starting to realize maybe letting Nadav walk wasn't the best idea because now the chemistry is just off, and it sounds like that's why Dr. Drew left as well. There's a theory going around that Nadav left because of... um. Because of that guy from Sopranos bullying him and stuff. <laughs> Do you guys believe that? I forgot who the kid's name is. Um, I think he played AJ in the Sopranos. I forgot his name. But there's a theory that that guy was bullying Nadav. <laughs> and that's why he left. <laughs> so, it's, Which is funny because it means Tom betted on the, that guy and his show isn't going well. And then the dove left and obviously he's doing well. So, you know, Tom bet on the wrong horse. But there's a theory because I think a couple of times when they were, when they were on the show, oh, is it AJ Soprano? Is that his name? Yeah. AJ Soprano. It's like, we look, yeah, Christopher from, from the Sopranos, but his name, I guess, is AJ. Um, yeah, because a couple of times when they were camera together, he would kind of be a little bit, I don't know, man. I want to say it's bullying, but the way he spoke to, oh, sorry. The, sorry, the, the name, he's, sorry, that's, oh, I don't know his name. His name is Robert Isla. Okay, that guy, Robert Isla, is um is the guy that Nadav allegedly felt very uncomfortable with behind the scenes. Because a few times when they were on stream together, 
he spoke to him in a not so kind way. It kind of felt like he was big timing him, bully. I don't know. It was a bit strange energy, very strange. But again, I think Robert Eiler is also very strange because he's got a lot of that. He's got a lot of that intense, like former addict energy about him. You know, like he's got a lot of that about him. So maybe that's part of the reason why he's a bit weird and awkward. But yeah, that's the theory that Nadav left because of that guy. Like this comment says, they listen to Dr. Drew regularly, and after Nadav left, they could tell it was done for. They said hearing Dr. Drew try to interact with the remaining booth boys was hard to listen to. He needs a co-host or an actual producer, and a bunch of other people said the same thing. And I know Nadav and Dr. Drew are pretty close, so I think Nadav was a bigger part of this company than Tom really realized. But I think he was. I think the same thing happened to to Tim Dillon. I think a lot of these guys, again, maybe maybe it's the fucking ego or the hubris or just the, you know, the delusion of comedians where they always think it's always them. When really, maybe on stage it is, but if it's a pod, I think the other elements kind of add to it. Like, um, I'm trying to think of the guy on Theo's podcast. Again, he doesn't even say too much, but who's the guy? The Asian dude that um, went on Theo's podcast, the producer. He usually only chimes in when Theo does it by himself, but he's actually quite an important comedic bit of relief on the show. If he wasn't there, you would notice it on his own because, you know, they kind of have some, they kind of have, I think his name is Riley, Riley Mao or something, Riley, Riley Mao or something, right? That kid kind of adds a bit to the show. Same thing happened with Tim Dillon and with Ben when Ben left. I don't think Tim appreciated how much Ben added to the show. His laugh, the insights, the weird little friction and kind of petty arguments they'd have live on, you know, on the recording and shit. So I think a lot of these comedians overestimate just their importance and don't realise sometimes with, with a lot of these podcasts, it it's about the whole team. It's about the vibe of everybody that kind of adds to why people like to listen to it. It's not just about you. It's not just about the stars. But I think the stars of the show, they get so caught up with just them being the stars that they think everybody else is, is dispensable. But then when they leave, they realise, you know, hey, these people are quite important too. Even if they're side characters, they kind of add something to the show as well. He's one of their longest employees, and he was their main producer. I think he said he had been there for seven or eight years, and they would interact with him a lot during the show. And like Tom said, he was basically the laugh track. And it sounds like without him, things are just completely different. But Tom probably figured since he's just a producer, then he's expendable. But now it looks like that's not the case. And I'm sure before Nadav left, he probably asked for a raise or something. Like also people are speculating maybe he wanted his own show on Tom's network, which would make sense because he left to start his own show on YouTube and it's going pretty well. And I'm sure if you're on Tom's network, it'd be doing just as well as Not Today Pal, you know, the podcast that Tom gave to Rob Eiler and Jamie Lynn Siegler. And it's funny because I clicked on a random episode of that and the first comment says, my God, the energy in the booth is dead now. So clearly Tom made a big mistake here letting Nadav go. And maybe Nadav just wanted to do things on his own. Maybe there's nothing Tom could have done. Or maybe Nadav realized his value to the show and asked for a raise or asked for his own show. And Tom denied it. And then, you know, he saw these two get a show and he's like, all right, this is ridiculous. I'm just going to go do things on my own. And it's funny that morale has been down since Nadav has left because the one time where the booth did sound very enthusiastic was when Steve-O was bashing Tom and Christina for making fun of poor people and not treating their employees well. I'm guessing there's probably not that much money left over for the guys in the booth either. Oh, it's man. all Tom and Christina just running around, <laughs> getting on private jets, uh -huh. making fun of poor people. Yeah. <laughs> God damn it. All right. <laughs> Teddy Brown was very, very uncomfortable <laughs> when when uh, Steve was saying what he was saying. Very, very uncomfortable. <laughs> Next up. <we> got... <laughs> yeah, so it's not a good sign when the only time the producers and everybody working behind the scenes get excited is when somebody's trashing their employer. And, you know, a few months ago, I thought Tom might be able to turn things around with YMH. But now it's starting to look like this is a sinking ship. And I'm sure Tom is... Don't, don't you find it funny that all these comedians that complain about, you know, get, they complain about pay when it comes to stand-up comedy. They complain about, you know, not getting opportunities. They complain about getting overlooked in some positions. And a lot of these guys also, it's funny because a lot of these guys and girls, especially in the comedy, you know, they grow up rich anyway. So they grow up with, with a certain level of wealth and privilege that allows them 
to kind of pursue their dreams and you know at a time where maybe most of us have to kind of wake up and just get regular jobs and kind of give up on our dreams because we don't have the fucking time or the availability to do so but don't you find it funny that these people are the same ones that also don't pay their employees well you complain about people not paying you well you actually come from money so you know you know <laughs> so it's not as if like you need all the money in the world you've already fucking got all of it right and then you also don't pay people well i find that interesting because I, I, I have a feeling and, I, and I'm, I'm being convinced now more so with the stream chat i have a feeling a lot of these people that work behind the scenes at podcasts producers and shit they don't get paid well especially comedy guys ones i have a feeling like the more the more flashy flashy the comedian is brennan being a good example the less likely he's pays people like if he's on private jets and he's driving, you know, lime green Dodges and Bentleys and Porsches, chins in a fucking Prius. Again, he could want a Prius, but look at that. Look at the look at the contrast of that. Chin is probably the most important person at Thick Boy, but he drives a Prius and Brendan's got 17 cars. <laughs> you know what I mean? I think a lot of these guys don't pay, don't pay their employees well starting to realize that as well so i wouldn't be surprised if he starts to downsize a little bit and also maybe this is why nadav left you know maybe the writing was on the wall and he's like you know i'm gonna get out now while it's still popular and i could still get a boost from their show and just go do my own thing which i think was probably the right move from him you know he didn't need a podcast production company to host his show i don't think anybody really needs that and like this comment says tom and christina over invested in the studio they thought the pandemic boom for all media was going to last forever and the deals they were offering for comedians that have a draw were too favorable to them so they got rejected that's why potter and sickle cell left after a year they got an initial bump but they would make way more money producing their own show so i think podcast studio companies just aren't very realistic long term i just also feel like people just they just overestimate how funny and how entertaining their shows are I don't think there's any need for the networks and it's like it just make your show and just stick with that you don't need like it doesn't make any sense for anybody to sign to these networks and just like it just doesn't make any sense when you can just set up your own channel and get all the benefits for yourself why would you do that you know even that bump the early bump of having viewers from the other show check your stuff out isn't necessarily a good thing either you actually probably want to build your fan base from scratch you want to go from having no views to some views but have those be your actual fans then just siphon off fans from another show do you know what i mean because they're not really people that are you know have any kind of loyalty to you they don't really care about it just, it just doesn't make any sense so i think in general this idea that podcast so just because you have a successful podcast doesn't mean you need to have a network it's not necessary just double that's why you have to give joe rogan a bit of credit he just sticks to what he does very well which is sit down with people and talk for hours he doesn't use that as the way to like oh now i should do movies now I should have a TV show. You know what I mean? It's not like, no, it's just because you're able to sit down and talk to people for hours doesn't mean you're somehow now the authority on all media and all entertainment. It's like such a weird ego thing. Because first of all, the podcast market is already completely saturated. There's way too many to listen to. And then also, like I said, there's really no need for people to use a podcast production company. Oh, uh, I you, just I just said that. Yes, big up those to try. Yeah, basically, there's no need to. Yeah, you, know, you can just do it on your own. Exactly. I mean, I guess the initial boost helps, but also most people that sign with production companies already have a following themselves. And it's not like you need this studio producing everything. I mean, producing your own podcast is not very hard. It's like literally one of the easiest things to do. I guess if you're somebody that just wants to show up, talk and get paid and not worry about anything else, that's the way to go. But it's really not that hard to set up your own podcast. It's kind of the opposite of the music industry. I find that most people that want to do podcasts or do content would prefer to just do it on their own as opposed to get sign up like sign up to something like in music you see a lot more people willing and ready to sign a 360 deal where they don't get a lot of the benefits but the label does but i think in content people would much rather do it on their own they'd much rather you know bust their ass and grow something from the ground up or just start it on their own and get all the benefits as opposed to sign up with a platform or with a studio get paid a salary but they're not be able to take anything more out of it, just a salary. I think most people would do that. So it's a weird kind of contrast in that respect. 
and it doesn't need to be this highly produced thing. You know, some people just think the more money you spend on something, the higher quality it is, the more views it'll get. But that is definitely not. The um, Andy Ward made a comment here, which I think might be another good one. Somebody else said as well, like um, podcasting killed comedy, but this is a really good point. Spotify ain't giving you a hundred mil, Tommy boy. Maybe that is part of the reason too. Maybe Joe Rogan's deal with Spotify fried everyone's brain. And you, we already know these comedians are very money motivated. A lot of these guys don't do stand up because they love stand up. They do stand up because it pays well, right? Because every every gig they go to, everywhere they fly, they pay to get getting paid to appear places. They get big, you know, they sell a lot of tickets. You get a good split on the gate, all this sort of shit. So maybe Joe Rogan's Spotify deal made all these guys get really excited and think they were next in line. Maybe that's what happened. Even though Joe Rogan's Spotify deal was really a one-off thing because, you know, he's got the biggest podcast in the world, so it makes sense why he got paid what he got paid. But I think a lot of these guys just saw him as, oh, he's a comedian like me. I've got a podcast like him. And they did the fucking, the boy math, one plus one equals one, equals two, sorry. And then done, here they are. And they feel, oh, I'm next in line. So in an effort to kind of make themselves more appealable or make themselves more worthy of an investment, they decided to fucking do networks with these other shows and stuff, not realizing that Joe Rogan deal was a bit of a one-off. We haven't seen another one like it since then. Do you know what I mean? So maybe that's what happened, actually. Maybe Joe Rogan's deal actually did fry these comedians' brains and make them believe that they were far bigger than they actually are and made them believe that they could maybe, you know, get the next deal in line the case i mean just look at brendan schaub he acts like he has this legit operation going on and he has a whole podcast studio he was mentioning recently how he has a cfo to run things he has a bunch of employees and then he has this giant space in la which has got to be really expensive and it's so unnecessary like he has it so he goes to a different room for every podcast he does you know like he has one room for the fighter and the kid then you go to another one for the golden hour then another one for his mma show then another one for his fight companion and then i think there's another room that mark harley used to do a show in and then he has to have a sink to piss in and it's all just so <laughs> you know what's really funny about this too it's as you mentioned i didn't think about this that's so unnecessary like no one else does their own show in that studio do they the only other person that films content at thick boy is what chin no one else has their own show so how is it a network if you all the shows include you does that make sense that doesn't a network have to be like different shows with different hosts all the other shows on there do like they all include brendan yo big up nj ranger appreciate it, bro they want a joe rogan franchise but we are lazy exactly exactly nj ranger exactly the common man's a lazy one the common man's a lazy one but here they are exactly it's fucking exactly big up nj ranger so unnecessary you know everything could easily be done from one room exactly. everything could be done from his house like in an office with mm. one producer there's no need for all this it's crazy and it's just kind of sad you know because he's kind of going for what tom has or what barstool does you know where he hires different people to do different podcasts but the best you do was mark harley and that ended up being a disaster so now it's just him jumping back and forth to different podcasts acting like it's something different and the funny thing is you know he'll never realize how big of a waste everything is and how unnecessary it is but that's what makes him brendan you know it's hilarious to watch so let's get back to Tom here. You know, at least he made it a step further with the whole podcast studio, but now it's not looking too good. And the podcast market not being too hot anymore is part of it, but the main problem here is Tom losing touch and thinking that he reached the point where he could just do and say whatever. But it also shows you how much money these guys make that, you know, that's probably what, that's probably what makes it so appealing or so tempting to do what they do. Because you realize how much money they make where they can waste as much money as they waste. Like, again, not to read anyone's pockets, but, you know, the rent on that studio space that Brendan rents out isn't going to be cheap, right? They don't they don't give discounts. That stuff comes out on the third of every, sorry, on the first of every single month. Um, you're paying for that. You're paying for your own lifestyle, the habits you already have. You're paying people's salaries. It's proof that the podcasting game in general, why it imploded, has probably less to do with the quality of the shows and just more to do with like how overpaid people were like how much you know how much the money 
didn't make sense in terms of the quality of the shows like some people are getting paid crazy amounts of money for shows that probably don't deserve that kind of p you know um and maybe it's a it's a it's a, it's a reflection on the whole industry being just grossly overpaid that they can kind of still survive the way they are like you know um, it kind of just shows you know basically that they're obviously wasting money but they're also getting crazy overly paid wants and people are going to support him no matter what like you could tell he's trying to move away from just being a goofy comedian to being a celebrity slash influencer that people want to pay attention to just because he's famous and he's interesting and he's doing cool stuff but as a comedian with fans that are adults you're going to lose people with that you know they're not interested in seeing tom segura's lifestyle yeah. like i think tom believed he was in a position where he could just coast because now he's got a lot of money and on social media, you know, if you have a lot of money, if you have nice things and nice cars and you're doing cool stuff, then people will pay attention to you. But since Tom is already known, like he already has an audience and his audience is not the right audience for that, it just doesn't work. You know, because usually it's just younger people that are interested in that shit. Like, for example, David Dobrik, he did the move that Tom wishes he could. Like, David used to do comedy vlogs on YouTube and he gained a huge audience. And because his audience is mostly kids, they'll just watch him do anything and they think him flying on a private jet is cool and worth paying attention to. So he managed to go over to Snapchat and he signed an exclusive contract with them, I believe, and he gets paid a ton of money for it. And all he has to do is just take pictures of his life because he's David Dobrik and he's flying private. He's going to nice hotels. He's going to cool places. He's going to fancy restaurants. That's all he has to do is just basically live the life as a celebrity and he gets paid for it. That is what Tom Segura wishes he was doing, which, you know, a lot of people wish they were doing that but tom i think he was trying to pull that off and he's slowly starting to realize it's not happening but he's still kind of trying you know like recently on tiktok he posted this video that's supposed to be a parody of like a day in the life kind of thing where he does a vlog of his day and you could tell he really enjoyed making the tiktok and he'll probably continue to do it and whatever you know if this is what makes him happy at least it's better than him. The funny thing about I saw this earlier before myself. The really cringy thing about this is that he's trying to do it in a mocky way, but I think he's trying to do it in a mocky way so that he can protect himself from being taken the piss out. Because the the Tom of old would have absolutely laughed at this. Would have been you know calling this guy a cool dad. Would have been ripping into his person on his podcast. That's the funny thing. He's turning into the guy that he always hated, but in an effort to protect himself from pushback or from insults he tried to do it in a mocky funny way you know that's the thing they tried to do so which is obviously deplorable because if you're going to do the influencers thing and you're going to be cringe stand in your cringe you know what i mean stand in it be proud of it and wear it you know wear it with pride and whatnot but he obviously wants that lifestyle but also doesn't want to be criticized for it so hey i'm going to do it in that kind of mocky satirical way so that people can't you know poke fun at me but you know the tom of old would have definitely taken the piss out of this guy him flipping out about poor people or having meltdowns at airports. Now it's time to put an outfit together. I think this looks pretty cool. I'm feeling pretty fresh. I'm feeling good about myself. Time to knock out a little bit of work. You know what? I think it might be time for another coffee. Mmm, this is good. This one is a, an espresso blend also. I'm really getting into espressos this time of year. So now, pre-show. You know, I like to go to the gym. Today I'm going to do chest and back. These dumbbells, they only go up to 50. <laughs> I'm trying to get stronger. Hopefully this works. These full extension push-ups are way more range than I'm used to. It's really tough to keep your hips up, but I'm working on it. Doing a little bit of back too. Do the back if you're gonna do the front. <laughs> now it's time for another outfit change. Oh yeah, I like that. Yeah, so let me know what you guys think about that down in the comment. That is that is a definition of midlife crisis, isn't it? Fucking hell, bro. Like, what the fuck is this? If you want to see more of that from Tom. And also, I just wanted to mention, Steve-O actually recently gave me a shout out on his podcast. He said he's a big fan of the channel. So, Steve-O, if you're watching, thanks. I appreciate it. And if you guys haven't seen the clip of him talking about the channel, I'll put it at the end of this video. But also, make sure you guys go check out my Patreon account. There's a ton of extra content on there. I just got done talking about the Jimmy Kimmel and Aaron Rodgers. Nice. Anyway, big up, um, big up, Finger Majiggy. Big up to his try. Um, moving on from that one, we've got another clip to watch. The Burt Kreischer addresses his haters. This is courtesy of Podcast Cringe. Let's see what he says about this one. I haven't actually seen this yet, so let's see what this is saying. Burt Kreischer addresses his haters courtesy of Podcast Cringe. Check it out. 